And yet you feel that even the outrage around this 16% VAT perhaps is just one of the many issues that Kenyans, had they been informed, would see the numerous other areas the government is stretching and digging the country further into a hole. I think the public is actually informed. I think the public is being dishonest mm -hmm. uh, because uh, what has driven us to this point is very severe political partisanship where people refuse to see issues unless, if, especially if they are being raised by uh, your political adversaries. Mm -hmm. um, so um, a lot of, I think, the, the outrage and yes. all this sort of thing and, um, is, I don't, is, I think, a uh, thing which um, we, we, we want to have our cake and eat it. Yes. And the same people are saying, no, no, no. This, I've been raising these issues about these mega infrastructure projects. Mm -hmm. People have been uh, supporting them. Um, so they cannot turn around and say that there are no consequences. Mm. So we have gotten to this culture of uh, doing things without consequences, mm. political consequences. Yeah. But unfortunately, economic things have consequences. The laws of economics will always come back to bite you. Uh, you can play around with politics, but once you play around with the laws of with economic, with economics and mm -hmm. finance, it will come back and get you. So do you think the president should um, assent to this bill by a parliamentarian seeking to further postpone? Or do you, in your view, think it should be a move to delete, do away with this law? Altogether, I think that's a minor issue. Um, the reason, but the why pain is being felt by Kenyans. Kenyans are going to feel a lot of pain. They haven't felt anything yet. <laughs> um, the 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 fundamental problem is one of market credibility. Mm -hmm. Okay, this year, the cost of servicing the debt is 870 billion shillings. Okay, 400 billion of interest. 470 billion shillings of principal uh, repayments. Mm -hmm. uh, the revenue and best case scenario is 1.4 trillion, um, but more realistically something around 1.3 trillion. Now, if you're paying interest 400 uh, billion, your salaries are close to 500 billion, pensions is something like 100 billion, mm. that's already a trillion shillings, okay, on, on headline. Uh, recurrent uh, budget items. Correct. You then have obligation of uh, the county's equitable share of 300 billion. That means if you pay the counties that equitable share, your revenue is finished. You cannot finance the national government recurrent mm -hmm. uh, expenditure. If you finance government recurrent expenditure, you cannot finance the counties. So. Uh, what you are likely to do is split between the two and none of them gets enough money to operate. Okay? Yeah. Uh, alternately, and this is likely to happen, is that this year we might see ourselves borrowing for recurrent spending. Wow. Um, and that means, that is if you freeze development uh, expenditure. Mm -hmm. So the government is in much more serious financial trouble than the issue of so, this uh, yeah. fuel tax. So this 70 billion that uh, the government is seeking to raise, you don't think it will be significant in... I I don't think they will raise. So I don't think they will raise more than 20, 30 billion shillings from this really? best case scenario because, uh, you see, as I said, one, there are several things which are going to happen. Uh, one, once you raise the price, the consumption will go down. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the amount you're able to collect also goes down. Two, as I said, uh, some of this money is going to come from other budgets. So VAT on other things is also going to go down. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that um, in VAT, because this fuel is now vertible, these companies can now claim input VAT. Mm -hmm. So there is also sort of money they're going to get back input VAT they were not getting back before. Right. Now, the trouble is, you see, you've shifted the tax to something which everybody must use. Mm. Okay? Once you shift that tax to something everybody must use, therefore everybody must pay, you are making it you are, uh, much more compulsive. Yes. Um, the businesses which are going to lose 
are the businesses of the things which are not absolute necessities. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, those businesses employ people. Those people have bank loans. So businesses it's likely to have, have, yeah. So um, even if you have an austerity program, uh, if, you, if you have to do fiscal consolidation, uh, the revenue side of the budget is not what is going to do it for you. So if you are a CS Treasury today, you're seeking to raise money. I would not be CS Treasury, so that, <laughs> Let, let's not speak <laughs> hypothetical things here. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if you're given the scenario Kenya finds itself in, where would you look to raise money to fund your budget? You can't, you can't raise your money. You cannot fund your budget now. That's the point. But which areas would you tax? That you, there's nothing else you can tax. The rich? There's, you cannot tax. There's nothing. This idea that you have rich people, you can go out there and tax. There isn't. The tax yield on this economy as it is is probably at its maximum, more so or less. So there's no legroom at there's all? There's no legroom for taxation, for more revenue, for raising revenue, very little. So we are doomed? And uh, you have to, expenditure will have to do the adjusting. Okay, so most of it will have to be expenditure which will do the adjusting. And yet we have not seen that kind of political will. Um, on both sides, no. So that's why I said it's incoherent. Nobody has a plan. But at any rate, once you get yourself into debt distress, there is no silver bullet. Okay, mm -hmm. this is, there's no technical it's fix. It's magic. There's no technical fix. Okay? Okay. So the idea that uh, you're just going to go out and catch some money and then plug the hole. You cannot. It's a huge uh, sort of structural um, imbalance All right. that you're dealing with. We have seen the president uh, visit the U.S. Uh, he met the U.K. Prime Minister here in Kenya. Now he's in China. This interest, some have described it as the second quote-unquote scramble for Africa. Do Kenyans, in your view, stand to benefit, or are we being drawn in to those further scenarios that complicate our fiscal standing going forward? I don't think so. I mean, what you have is, you know, the, the, the countries you're looking at, particularly the UK, the UK is in uh, political and economic flux mm -hmm. because of Brexit. So what you have is a country which is stumbling from pillar to post, um, doesn't know what, where it's coming or going, <laughs> um, looking for, you know, things as an alternative. So I don't think that uh, really an engagement with the UK is, is of any significance. Right. Um, China's uh, big uh, BRI, mm -hmm. whatever the road and bridge, and it's 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 a new Silk Road thing. Yes, it's also coming unstuck um, for various reasons, um, including the sort of reckless uh, predatory finance that, that they have lent us. So I think on the international side, I don't see. There, as I said, there are no silver bullets. Mm. Um, the the Europe has been in economic crisis for quite a long time. Um, it's uh, not looking, it doesn't have a sense of direction mm -hmm. as to where uh, it should go. Yeah. Um, we can't talk about the US, it's in a state of flux. Um, I've never been impressed by China. Um, I don't think China understands. There are two things China doesn't seem to understand. One is capitalism and one is democracy. And uh, it makes global decision based on its authoritarian sort of political model, and that's coming unstuck. Okay. So I actually do not see any of those things uh, providing any any sort of uh, useful reprieve. Yeah. No, no. As we bring this to a close, uh, talk to us a little on the state of Kenya's economy, so that we have a budget that we do not have enough funds, and so we are seeing moves like this 16% uh, VAT to try and bridge that gap, and the burdening debt, and of course there's the uh, wage bill that's enormous. So what's the state of Kenya's economy? How do you describe it at this point? Um, you know, we've been here before. Um, we are exactly where, about where we were in 1997, uh, after the election, the last term of Moi, uh, and uh, a lot of political uncertainty, um, a lot of economic uh, also uh, mismanagement, and uh, you saw the country go into economic decline uh, right up to 2003. And actually, it didn't. It took uh, until NAC and the economic recovery process happened. That's where we are. Sort of. I think it's a place we've been before. Mm -hmm. uh, 
it's as a result, the thing is what we have is a disconnect in society. You have a society whose self-perception economically and its actual reality are completely disconnected. Kenya is a very poor, fragile country economically. But if you listen particularly in Nairobi, the chattering classes, we think that we are a sort of middle income country which should be able to afford sort of a very high standard of living for, for everybody. We are not there. Yeah. So what we have been doing is living beyond our means, uh, investing, borrowing money, uh, squandering a lot of it, and investing the rest of it in things which are actually not going to uh, give us a, an economic return. And um, now uh, the chickens begin to come home to roost. So this is what we're experiencing. Um, we are experiencing the consequences of you know, several years. Uh, the, first, the entire first term of, of, of Jubilee government has actually been spent uh, digging Kenya into an economic hole. Yeah. Uh, so it, and the, once you do that, it takes quite a long time to dig yourself out. So it will take quite some time. Oh, it will take quite a while, yeah. It will be several years of, right. of trying to dig yourself out. And of course, it also exposes you to fairly big risks, um, especially risks of uh, sort of financial uh, meltdown that you see in other countries in this situation. Many thanks, David thank D. Economy. So I appreciate your time with us here on Checkpoint. And thank you for staying with us.